Okay, good morning and welcome back to Create Fair Inspire Podcast. This is episode 427. If you're joining me live, please say hello and let me know if you're traveling this morning or where you're from or if you have any questions for me. I would love to hear from you. I'm going to turn this a little bit. The sun is really strong already this morning. Good morning, Olivia from Ireland. Glad you could be here. Hi, Sanchelle from Nashville and Rose from Michigan. Hi, Grace. Thank you, Grace. Hi, Christine. Hi, Constance. Thanks, everybody, for joining live. Good morning, Lily and Thea, Olivia, Jill, Mar, Debbie, Pat, Judy, Cherie, Nalinda, Lisa, Nikki, Shelly, Lifestyles. Thanks everybody for joining live. Hi Cynthia from Orlando. Hi Naomi. Uh, happy first day of summer everybody. Summer's my favorite season of the year for sure. Uh, hi Luna. And since we get almost year round summer here, that's why I live here. <laughs> but it's still a fun um, day to celebrate anyway. Uh, hi Pat and Lydia. Hi Enid from Passaic, New Jersey. It is so hot and steamy here already. We're supposed to get record highs today. Uh, high 90s with a heat index of 105. Hi, Joe. And I'll tell you, it feels like it's going to be, um, it feels like it's going to be like that. I feel like I'm melting already. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, I think I've got all the names so far. Maybe if I missed your name, I'm sorry. So I want to tell you about my outfit first today because, hi Joe, uh, Jill has a furnace in Michigan, wow, that is hard to imagine. Uh, hi Jermaine, hi Tien, thank you Edith, yeah that's what I wanted to talk about. So in my outfit today I've got a couple things to point out. First of all, I'm wearing the fine chandelier earrings in Be So Fine Yarn Colorway Lilac Memories. And these are a super duper fun and easy earring to make. They're big, they're bold, and they're light as a feather. So if you have droopy ear holes like I do, they won't wear them down. But you can talked about in the tutorial video. So you can find this free pattern on my website with written instructions as well as charts. And there's a video tutorial as well here on my YouTube channel. It's called the Fine Chandelier Earring. Easy to find. Just put that into the search or you could look in my jewelry playlist here or search patterns on my website by jewelry. All sorts of ways to find the pattern. So easy, so fun, doesn't take up much yarn. So if you have a little extra be so fine from a different project, you could make this with just a tiny bit of yarn even. Um, I starch them afterwards so they hold their shape and the starching lasts for, I don't know, maybe 10 wears, and then you might need to starch them again. It doesn't hold forever, and that's fine too. There's other things you could use to stiffen them that might be more permanent, but I just went what with whatever. Uh, uh, you'll have to look at the pattern to see what size the hook I used, Jermaine. I don't have that information off the top of my head, but I know it was a small one. I just used spray starch and laid them flat on a uh, dish towel and then let them dry. Super easy. And that was after, you know, wetting them and pinning them out to block them first. So I wanted to have a nice strong shape. And then after that, put a little spray starch on them. Super easy. Yeah, Debbie's made them. She says super easy too. Yeah, you could use the liquid plastic epoxy from that I used in 80 Handmade Gifts as well. Sure, you could definitely use that. You'd use any kind of a stiffener. You could use glue. It doesn't matter. They're just... They're so great and in any color. And so anyway, I wore them in Lilac Memories today because I wanted to match my purple shorts. So I've got on purple shorts with a lighter lavender tank top. And this is one of my newer colors that I just got in of that cardigan that I wear in black sometimes. So it's a super easy t-shirt material cardigan from my Amazon shop. And I wanted, and one of the ways that I prefer to wear it actually is to take those fronts to just tie them so it's more like you know a short midriff layer over the top of something else i think the style looks amazing over that t-shirt sundress 
that uh, we all love from my Amazon shop, but I wanted to show that it looks cute over at the stores as well. And the reason why I've been buying more colors this week is because one of the things that I think might be fun to do with this cardigan is to pop out the back panel, is to pop out this back panel and replace it with some crochet, or maybe just cut out a portion of it and replace it with some crochet. So I'm go so I bought it in navy. I have it in black. I bought it in navy, ivory, and light heather gray. And I'm going to do some different variation of cutting a portion out and adding a um, a crochet panel or a knit panel or something like that. So I think that it's the right kind of fabric. It's that jersey knit t-shirt, so it's not going to unravel. Um, we could sew a seam on it if we wanted to. That's fine too, but it's nice and light. It'll be really easy to take a short, a thin crochet hook and work right onto it. And if you don't want to crochet right onto it, you could make a crochet panel or a knit panel and sew it in afterwards as well. Yeah, it would be really great for a yoga outfit too. I agree. But it's so lightweight. Um, it's really just teacher material and I love it. So you can find that in my Amazon shop as well. And it comes in a ton of colors and prints. Um, but I think it's going to be so imagine when I'm wearing this outfit, right? Which I love the outfit, but imagine if in the back, this was all sheer and lacy. Won't that be amazing? And I think on some of the colors, we could do some color work with different colors of yarn and oh, I, you can tell I lost weight. That's awesome. I can't see your name. But thank you. Yeah, I've been working. I started the gym Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I've been in the gym five days, hardcore, but five days straight now. Um, and I haven't noticed the results yet, but I believe that there's no way I'm not doing something good for my body. So I'm going to, I'm going to take, I did before photos last Sunday and took measurements. I think it was 42, 37, 42. I can't believe I had a 37 inch waist because in one of my modeling um, portfolio, or one of my modeling composites that I showed a friend recently, I had a 22 inch waist. Not that I want to get back there, but how do you go from a 22 to a 37? Anyway, that's another story. So each week I'm going to take progress photos in the same bathing suit in the same spot in my house and take measurements every week. So it'll be really fun to keep track of what, um, what kind of changes I see. So I'm eating healthier, working out a minimum of one hour a day in the gym. And yeah, it's gonna be exciting to see what kind of things I can make. But so thanks for noticing. I did notice that the shorts fit a little uh, better this morning. <coughs> All right, so what was I going with? Oh, I was talking about the top. So yeah, I think this is going to be really fun. I think that we might be able to do all of this with a seam ripper. Um, and if that doesn't work out, I'm just gonna cut it. I'm not really gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna cut it. If I think it needs seaming, I'll seam it. If I don't think it needs seaming, I won't. And I'm going to make crochet panels for the back. Because the front, I like the way it looks just as is. It could, you could do a tiny edging on the front. That would be fine. You could cut the sleeves out and replace them with crochet in it, please. You could do that as well. For me at the moment, uh, my goal is to do something bold in the back. So as I do stuff like that, I will definitely share it with you. Uh, it's going to be super fun. And in the meantime, it's a great layering piece just right out of the box. So they're not expensive. They come in a bunch of colors. And if you want to check it out, um, it's in my Amazon shop. The link's in the video description below. Um, I missed something about a uniform. A tool, don't know. Uh, Benzie ordered some of my yarn and is waiting for the shipment. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so I brought a different demo this morning. After talking about, um, you know, having trouble pulling out from a center pull ball, I thought it might be fun to force it in some balls of yarn and see if we can make a mess and fix the mess. Um, so I bought three, brought three balls because you know as soon as you want to demonstrate something going wrong it's going to go right and perfectly every time. So and it's possible that that will happen on three balls but I'm going to try anyway. So I'm going to try to find the center 
in this ball of yarn. And you know, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So, and it worked pretty perfectly on this one. Told you it was going to work that way. As soon as you want a problem, it's not going to show up on camera. It's like wanting your pet to do something for the camera, right? So it is just a little bit here. And what I want to point out is that you have to always be gentle with stuff like that. Never pull hard if it looks like a mess. And so just make sure that it's gonna pull out fine. Yep, no more clumps in there. Yep, this one's gonna be perfect. This is Be So Baby Yard in Colorway Platinum, which is a beautiful silver. So I'll just wrap this around the outside of the label. And now we've got a center pull ball ready to go. All right, let's try another one. All right, so I'm going to stick my finger in both sides and kind of loosen it up and try to see if I can find the, the center. Sometimes I'm correct in this, sometimes I'm not, but you know, you got to give it a shot. All right, I did not pull right on this one. Okay, we've got a mess, right? So it's going to pull out pretty well from here now, but we've got a mess and we've got a mess in two spots. So we've got a bunch here and we've got a bunch here. Now, if you start just pulling on the tail, or pulling on one end, you could actually tighten this up and create a knot. It's not a knot at this point. It's just wound and pulled out of there. It's still quite loose. The key is staying calm and not pulling hard. There is no knot in there until you pull hard. And whether it was because I pulled too hard getting it out of here, like if I was having a lot of resistance while I was trying to get out of here and pulled hard, and I might have created a knot right from the get-go, but anytime you feel resistance with yarn, the key is to figure out what the resistance is and not, not, not pull on it. If there's anything I can teach you, it's to not pull on something that is resisting you. Cannot do that. Okay, so we've got two messes here. In this one, you want to see which side um, wants to unravel the most. It could be the tail or it could be the piece that came out of the ball is easier to do on a surface instead of up in the air for a camera like this but I'm still okay so we can see that they're twisted around each other finding where the tail is going is really important and just following the direction just following that journey of the tail is a really important part you may see that it was twisted around the other piece so you want to just very gently and slowly on, you know, get it back from around all of those twists. And now it looks like it's wanting to just come apart. Now that it's untwisted, okay, so it's gonna fall to the ground. I'm gonna put the camera all the way down now. Uh, I think that's in my lap. So I'm gonna go back to the, the actual end and start winding it into a ball. I'm just doing a regular ball, not a center pull ball at the moment, just to keep this nice and quick. And you'll see we come up to a, a, a knot again, or, you know, a cluster of something. So what you want to do is kind of stretch it out. The more you can stretch it out without putting any resistance on it, the more likely you are to figure out what's going on, okay? And pulling from both directions sometimes helps, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't help to pull from both directions, you've got a different type of a situation. And then you want to see if you can, I've got, I'm getting resistance from both directions now. So I'm going to start gently pulling on, not pulling, but gently stretching apart what's going on down there, seeing if I can find some direction that can get untwisted, see if there's some sort of a twist in there. Now, even with, this is a pretty mild knot situation, but if I had put any resistance on any of this this morning, we would not be having this type of success. I have been extremely gentle and extremely, what would you call it? I'm being curious about where this, the yarn is going. I've been paying really close attention to the direction of the tail and the direction of the other end of the yarn on the other end of the knot situation. So now we're gonna wind it up to, we have a second little mess that came out of the center of the ball. So first thing to do, see how they're twisted? I hope that's showing up on camera. They're twisted here. So I'm gonna pick it up and let them gently untwist themselves. And as you do that, more than likely it will undo itself. And so you'll just pull it in both directions until you're done. And then wind your ball. Did that show up on camera? 
My camera's already gone dark because it's so hot out here. Hopefully that showed up. If anyone wants to give me any feedback. Cherie says yes, wonderful. Well, I hope that was helpful then. Did that help anybody at all? Yes, it did, wonderful. Okay, well, we've got another ball of yarn here, so let's keep going. Let's see what we find here. Maybe we'll find a bigger mess or we'll find something easy, don't know. So when you stick your fingers in both ends, you want to try to find the middle and it doesn't always end up that way because there's different grooves in here. And that's part of the problem too. If you can't recognize where the center is as you're doing this, then you end up being in a groove like maybe at the 10 mark of the ball and you pull from there, that's another reason why you get those big chunks. And sometimes it's really hard to find that in different balls of yarn. This one's, yeah, this one's gonna pull out hard too. Okay, so we pull out a chunk and it's gonna be smooth sailing from there. So I'm not gonna worry about the ball anymore. And now on this one, I don't even see the tail. That's the other problem now. So I don't even see the beginning tail yet. So I'm gonna unravel back from the side of the ball and just be as gentle as possible. This is, if you think about that, this is string. This is miles of string. Of course it's gonna be delicate and of course it could get it caught up in knots quickly. The most important thing to do is to not pull on something that gives you resistance. If it'll just move back and forth for you, wonderful. I found the tail now too. Okay, let's see if, okay, I'm gonna put the camera down again because what I wanna do is pull from both ends and see if that helps. Sometimes this helps, but do you notice how gently I'm pulling? I'm literally just slightly moving it. If I see any resistance, I'm going to stop and investigate why there's resistance. It could be a twist. Okay, we have some resistance. Oh, no, we didn't have any resistance. Okay, so now the next thing is we've got a pile of yarn that I've piled over here and we've got a pile of yarn that I've piled over here. So now because this is on top and not the tail, I'm going to pull it across until I find the tail. The tail's on the bottom and so if I were to just pick up the tail right now from the bottom, I would start creating another knot. So now I have picked up the tail, I have moved everything so that the tail was on top now and now that the tail is on top, now I can wind into a ball. Sorry, I can't see the comments, but what was happening, somebody was saying something to me, but I don't know what it was. Hi, Charo, thanks for joining live. Glad you could be here. Thanks to anybody else joining that I missed your name. Yeah, so the, ne the last part that I just mentioned is also really important too. As you're arranging that yarn and pulling apart the, and pulling apart the, uh, what do you call it? The, the knot, you've now created that area where you've been placing the yarn is safe. It's not knotted, but if the tail isn't on top, which how could it be? You have to rearrange it a second time to get the tail on top. Because if you just pull the tail from the bottom, you will almost invariably end up getting another knot. So it's really important to do what I did. Um, Lisa's done it this way. Good, that's great. And you know what? Everybody needs reminders sometimes. Some people don't know any of these tips and tricks, so it's always a good conversation to have. Uh, Lydia's enjoying learning. Good, wonderful. I also wanted to point out that I like these three colors together. Um, this might be a neutral baby combination too. We've got violet, snowflake, and platinum. Be really pretty for some home deck stuff too. Make a gorgeous afghan if those are the colors in your living room or your bedroom. Be beautiful for a mandala or a wall hanging or maybe some curtains. Cute stuff, definitely for an afghan though. I would love that for like a big motif afghan. Thanks. Hi, Marsha. Thanks for joining live. Thank you, Sancho. I love Be So Baby yarn too. It is so incredibly soft. And this is my DK weight yarn. 
Oh, Charles. Well, I'm glad you could join live today. I hope you enjoy the recorded version if the time doesn't work for you as well. But thanks for joining live. Glad to have you. about what I showed this morning or any questions in general. Julie loves Be So Baby too. Yes, it is so incredibly soft. Jane loves it too. Me too. So, so soft. It would be fantastic for chemo caps. You know it's great for bags. If any of you made that tapestry bag that we did with it before, um, it'd be really wonderful for a chemo cap. I made a chemo cap with some bright pinks and purples a while back, but even if you did some tapestry crochet and did some sort of tapestry crochet in these colors for a chemo cap, that would be absolutely beautiful. It's extremely soft um, for a really sensitive skin. Does anybody have any other questions? Uh, it's, um, last night I told you guys I was going to yoga at the gym. The air conditioning didn't work in the yoga studio or the workout room or exercise room. And uh, so it was extremely hot in there. So I guess I had a, an almost version of hot yoga. I don't know if that's for me. It was, I almost passed out and I was sweating so bad that my yoga mat was slippery and I almost fell like every time I did downward dog and it seemed like she had us in downward dog every couple of minutes. So it was stressful, it was dangerous. I wanted to give up at the 10 minute mark, the 20 minute mark, the 25 minute mark, and then somehow I passed the corner of wanting to give up anymore and I made it through a whole hour. It was the hardest thing I've done in the gym all week, which is surprising. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, I was very tempted to give up and give up. And that's always a good story to share with people. And then tonight, I finally get my consultation with the fitness director at the gym. And I told him about some of my fitness goals. And he's put together a routine to teach me that focuses on core and lower body. And I can't wait to meet him and see what he's going to teach me tonight. So that should be really exciting. Uh, oh, yeah, I heard that. Yes, it was National Yoga Day yesterday. How funny that I went to yoga for the first time in years on National Yoga Day. It was a co-ed class, too. There were just as many men as women in there, which I've never seen before. But that was cool. Uh, yeah, I didn't give up, and that's what I'm super proud of, and that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Yep, just never give up. That's what I've been telling Marlon. He hit the gym real hard the first couple of days, and he's really sore in his right arm because from playing tennis all these years and being a lefty, he's way more dominant in his left arm and way stronger. So his right arm has been trying to keep up this week, and I've been talking to him a lot about rest and recovery, and he ended up taking the whole day off yesterday, and I just praised him with positive reinforcement to tell him that I'm so proud of him. I know how hard it is to want to just push, 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 but you have to remember to listen to your body and relax. So I was super proud of him yesterday um, for doing that. That's not necessarily something that comes easy to a 17-year-old, um, but he did listen. He listen to his body. I don't know if you listen to me or his body, but he, uh, he took some time off to rest his arm and I'm so happy for him. That's really wonderful. And it's been so wonderful to have him home all week. We've spent more time together than we have, I think in years. Uh, I haven't been able to see, I mean, I just haven't spent time with him. Yet he's been so busy with tennis and then so tired afterwards and, and maybe sad and upset too because uh, he was falling out of love with it. So there's just been so many dynamics going on with in his personality that um, I haven't, I, I'm spending more time with him this week than I have in years. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful feeling. He wanted to play cards with me last night. He wants to hang out with me. Uh, he talks to me. I laughed with him a bunch yesterday. It's just, it feels so good. So wonderful. It's still hard to figure out our new routine, but, um, and the transition is still stressful and confusing, um, but we're having moments of a lot of fun process. So um, I'm just gonna go with that for now. <laughs> 
Hi Tina, thanks for joining live. And Karen, good morning. Yeah, it is incredible. I've got lots to be grateful for right now. And uh, that's wonderful. I'm very happy about that. All right, so we talked about my earrings, talked about the sweater. We, I demoed some of the different ways to um, figure out some knots in the balls of yarn. I'm gonna try to think about some more demos to do of mistakes and how to fix things. I have a disaster on my hands with a sweater that I was working on. Remember the Bibiana sweater from Layers Knit and how I was re-knitting it in Be So Sporty Bling? Well, in the middle of one of the lower body rounds, which has a ton of stitches on it, my circular needle broke, and I lost about 30% of the stitches on that round. And it's been sitting in a bag ever since. And I would really, really, really like to go live or do a video when I'm fixing that, but it's gonna have to be in my studio. So I don't know if I do that, you know, maybe during a podcast time, but do it from my studio. Um, so, you know, it's been sitting there for at least a month now, but I don't want to work on it until I can share it with you. I think there's really a lot that I can show you. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be a mess. And sometimes I don't even pick things up perfectly as I'm picking them up. I have so many tips to teach about that, that I really want to hold off on doing it until I can do it on camera to share it with you guys. So maybe we'll even do the podcast just from my studio one day this week so we can do that as an overhead shot because I really truly think that um, some people will enjoy my tips on it. I have some tips that have really helped me over the years. Um, yeah, we've all been there, Lisa, absolutely. Okay, so why did I mention that though? Oh, yeah, I want to do some more tutorials like that. Maybe here in the podcast and then eventually do some proper videos too. But, you know, those are the things that you don't learn normally. You've got to figure out how to fix the problems when they come up. So, yeah, we all need tips like that, Barbara. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm making Marlon's favorite pork dish later today. I, uh, I cook pork with orange juice, garlic, onion, cinnamon, and chili pepper. And it is one of his favorite things in the world. And I'm probably I'm thinking about doing a video on that later today as well. So hopefully that works out. It's so easy. I, it just goes in the um, Instant Pot. I just dump all that stuff in there and it comes out tasting out of this world. So Joe says yes. Okay. So does Grace. So does Lisa. So does Thea. Okay, great. Right. So I did it frozen the other day and I had to double the time, which was amazing. The fact that you can just, oh, I'll just add 30 more minutes. Oh, no big deal. Uh, and it turned out amazing. But today I have it thawed, so I'm going to do it proper. And uh, yeah, I'll do that video later today. What else? I don't know. I think it's time to pick a book. So if somebody would like to pick a number between one and five, I will pick one of our issues of Create, Share, Inspire podcasts, or Create, Share, Inspire notebooks. And Jane says one. Here's issue one. And I will randomly pick a quote to chat about today. The water looks a lot like this photo today too. Oh, this is so good. I love this one. This is by Lao Tzu. The journey of 1,000 miles begins with one step. Yes, this is true for whatever you want to do in life. If you have any interest in self-improvement of any kind, being a better mother, being a better friend, being a better partner, being a better wife or husband, lover, whatever you want to call it, um, being better at your diet or your exercise or your health, being better at knitting or crochet or piano or singing or whatever it is that you want to learn and get better at, it starts with the first step. And as you continue to make steps in that same direction, no matter how slow you go, you're compounding and you're growing and it's just one step at a time. As long as you're going in the right direction, it is all that matters. Lao Tzu, the journey of 1,000 miles begins with one step. I love this. I love it. And just to remember, even when we love self-improvement and love being better than we were the day before, no matter where you're at, you're good enough 
right now too. And if you need the reminder to go look in your mirror this morning and tell yourself, I am good enough right now, then let this be your reminder. <laughs> because you are. We all are good enough right now. And some of us enjoy self-improvement and that's wonderful too, but no matter what, you're good enough right now. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed my show and tell, my tutorial, the beautiful scenery, chatting with me and everyone else here. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day.